our topic review on microfluidic fuel cells. The simplest explanation of what a fuel cell is is it's a device that uses hydrogen as a fuel to produce electrons, protons, heat, and water. There are several types of fuel cells that operate in different, differently, but in general work in the same way. The way a fuel cell works is that hydrogen is supplied to the anode in the negative terminal of the fuel cell, while the oxygen is supplied to the cathode in the positive terminal of the fuel cell. Through a chemical reaction, the hydrogen is split into an electron and a proton. Each takes a different path to the cathode. The electrons are capable of taking a path of, other, of another through the electrode, which then is harnessed cor correctly, produced electricity for a given load. The proton passes through the electrolyte, and both are reunited at the cathode. The electron and proton and oxygen combine to form the harmless byproduct of water. Fuel cells and batteries are, are different in the sense that a fuel cell is higher in overall energy density and creates electricity through a chemical reaction, and unlike the battery, it does not need to be replaced as long as it has enough fuel to produce electricity. The type of fuel cells we're going to be talking about are laminar flow-based fuel cells, or LFFCs. They're basically composed of an aqueous stream containing a liquid fuel and an aqueous stream containing an oxidant that are introduced into a single microfluidic channel in which the opposing sidewalls are the anode and cathode. Dissolved oxygen is primarily used as the oxidant since it is readily available in the atmosphere, making it ideal for most microfluidic fuel cell applications. A group led by Jaya Shri worked on an air-breathing LFFC model and they tried to address limitations present with current LFFCs, which were caused primarily by low diffusivity and low oxygen concentration, which provides an insufficient driving force to replenish the depletion boundary layer on the cathode. So in order to address these limitations, the group integrated a porous air-exposed gas diffusion electrode, or GDE, which allows oxygen delivery directly from air when using dissolved oxygen as the oxidant source. And based on their schematic diagram alone, you can see that it's evident that the air-breathing GDE will replenish oxygen from air much faster than the conventional LFFC. And the results were that the best performance was observed for a formic acid concentration of one molarity, which reached a maximum current density of about 130 milliamps per centimeter squared, and a maximum power density of 26 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So the oxygen reduction rate was greatly enhanced, and this method improved the performance limitations on mass transfer of current LFFC models by using GDE cathodes. A group led by Shagong proposed a new design for air-breathing microfluidic fuel cell with a fuel reservoir. The reason for this is they saw that the use of high concentrated fuels such as foric acid caused the removal of reaction products and bubbles to become difficult as the flow rate decreased. The results from this new proposed microfluidic fuel cell led to a fuel stream to be eliminated from the channel, which then resulted in anode to cathode spacing and electric ionic resistance across the flow channel to decrease as well as the bubbles that were formed by the formic acid to be released as well into the fuel chamber. Since the fuel was introduced to the anode through the top side wall of the channel, the channel depth was able to be decreased, which caused the whole design to benefit 